Let's go to Philadelphia. DeAndre Swift is RB23. He's in round six. Rashad Penny is RB39. He's in round 10. Uh, Swift in round six or Penny in round 10? Heath. Um, I I guess I'll go with the late guy again. again it seems like all these battles, I'm just lower than everyone on them. <laughs> um, but I also am looking at full PPR rankings, and this is half PPR, so that might be part of it. Um, I... I don't think this like I, I I'm okay getting a piece of both of these guys. I really would prefer to not do it before round seven, so that's why I said Penny. I think there's a very good chance one of them's going to get hurt and the other one's going to have a stretch as a top twelve running back. Um, I think there's a pretty low chance that either of them has two hundred touches over the full season, but they're nice guys to have on your team for that time that they're really good. And what do you like better? Sixth round for Swift or tenth round for Penny? Dan. Yeah, it's not really close for me. It's going to be 10th round for Penny. There's just too many red flags for me with DeAndre Swift, a player who I didn't really like that much coming out of Georgia for reasons that I don't like a lot of these running backs when I watch them on tape. I don't feel like they do a good job of processing, men mental processing their blocks. They're picking holes that I think are leading to them losing yards. I think we saw that in Detroit. Even before, you know, the injuries, you saw Deuce Daly in the, in the hard knocks be like, look, you got to hit the hole. Like, you can be a great back, but you got to hit, you got to, you got to be a great back and he's missed 42 of 82 games looking this up in his career deandre swift so i don't really i mean we could talk about the injury situation with shot penny but i don't think it's too far off with swift so i would go penny here slightly but i just don't want any of this because piece of this because what i saw in the playoffs and at the end of the year was kenneth gainwell who a lot of people myself included liked a lot Last year, we were wrong on him. He didn't really help us during the regular fantasy season. But in the actual NFL playoffs, his role really expanded. And I think he's going to have that role again for 2023. I think Gamewell is going to be a real big thorn in the side of anyone who's expecting consistent fantasy production from Swift or Penny this year. So I don't really like either. I'd rather gamble on the later guy. Overall, I feel like Penny is a better runner than Swift, and they both have the same kind of injury concerns. I Okay. You might be right about Swift missing some things and not processing well. And, and there was a quote from Ben Johnson, the coordinator from the Lions. I've mentioned this a lot where he said, we need our running backs to, you know, basically get more out of their carries. And then they change their backfield entirely. Yeah. So I, I and plus what you said about hard knocks, like that is an indictment on Swift as a rusher. But at the same time, I mean, he's been a really good rusher. So even with those deficiencies, he's still so explosive. He's got to be one of the most explosive running backs in football. And yeah, he might make some mistakes, but also he he makes dynamic plays and it's it's yeah. incredible. So I'm not going to be as hard on him in that regard. And my it's concern just, for, for Penny, I'm sorry, he's my concern for Penny. And the reason why I would take Swift in round six over Penny in round 10 is that if there are no injuries and Penny's just as likely to get more injured as Swift is, if not more likely, like Penny's not going to catch passes. I feel pretty confident in that. And he, I don't think he's going to average the 15 carries per game that Miles Sanders did because Sanders got almost all of the running back carries. I think there's going to be a split between Penny and Swift. So I actually don't really see a reason to draft Rashad Penny, especially in a PPR league. He might be an 11 to 12 carry guy. Like, I think I compared him to Gus Edwards. Um, if he doesn't score, you're drafting talking him, about though. I, I don't think you're wrong, Adam, but I think if you draft him, you're at a point where you like where you're talking about right now from an ADP range standpoint, you're at the point where you're just at late rent. You're at the dart throw period where you're looking for, I hate to say it, but an injury to someone else in his backfield. Sure. And then yeah. he becomes valuable because that Miles Sanders role is it's not it's probably you're right. It's probably not likely. It's probably some kind of split. But if anyone were to get that rollback. That's where you, that's when you're like, okay, now we hit on value on this pick because you talked about how like, okay, I like Swift a little more because he at least he can catch passes and Penny doesn't catch passes. Are there really any patches? Cat, uh, sorry, yeah. catches to be, or sorry, passes to be yeah. caught in there this will offense? Be. I think the running backs. Would, I think I don't think they have the fewest running back targets in football. Right. I they will. I believe they will change that. I don't Why think though? I don't think you trade for DeAndre Swift and don't use him that way. But he uh, won't. He won't you have AJ hard. Brown and Devontae Smith it and Dallas Goddard. Fun. You're right. You're right. It's you never work right. your way to the running back. All right, Heath, just, I know you wanted to get a word in. Go ahead, and, and we'll go to our next one. Well, I think it's two things. Like I, You know, I've been a huge backer of Swift in the past. I definitely liked him a lot more than Dan did when he came into the league. Um, but, like, the last two years, he's been slightly below average as a pass catcher. And the Eagles throw the ball to their running backs less than any team. I don't, I don't think that changes with Jalen Hurts. And the, unless somebody gets hurt um, amongst their their passing, 
the receiving options. But the the thing that you said that you're you're not going to hold it against him, it doesn't. It's not about whether we hold it against him. That's where we get in trouble, I think, with backs like him. It's about whether the next coach holds it against him. Mm-hmm. Why would they hold it against him if they just traded for him? I mean, it, they you're really give up anything. They're ignoring the benefits. Though. They didn't tra- well, really trade for him. They traded a fourth round pick that they get back once they let him leave. Okay, but they but they still have a talented player on their team. They're going to use him. You're ignoring the benefits of DeAndre Swift. If you want a home run, now Penny can do that too. Penny's really good, right. but he but Swift is a terrific playmaker. There's no reason not to get him on the field. But yeah, I don't know. Go play some. It's just it's hard for me to envision like where the fantasy's production comes from on a right. basis. Let's go to Miami here. Miami, I was really surprised by the eh, I guess I wasn't that surprised. A little surprised. <laughs> I was surprised by the ADP. Devon A chain is yeah. the first one off the board, round eleven. And then Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson are RB fifty two and fifty three. None of these guys were in the top forty. Uh A chain, Mostert, Wilson, Heath, two questions. Who should be the first Dolphins running back drafted? And will there be any Dolphins running back worth starting without an injury? Yeah, I think that there will probably be a Dolphins running back worth starting. I would bet on it being a chain. I would bet on it being somebody else at some point in the season and somebody else at a different point in the season. But I think for the most part, they will have uh, they'll have a startable running back. I don't think they'll just chop it up so much that we can't use anybody. I guess one of Wilson or Mostert is going to share with a chain most weeks. But a chain's my favorite value. Okay. Dan, quick thoughts on the Dolphins. We'll take a break after that. In the same boat as Heath. All show. Me and Heath are aligning. I'm with, with Heath on A-Chain. They drafted A-Chain for a reason. He's the most talented back in that backfield. When I actually went back and watched a lot of A-Chain on tape, I think anyone who went who wants to take the time to watch him, you'll be pleasantly surprised with how he is as a between-the-tackles runner. He's billed right now as the speed guy, bounces outside, yada, yada. Don't believe that. Watch him play, and he could actually hit it in between the holes. I think he's going to be a good back in the NFL, and I, I think he'll be the clear-cut best talent in that, and I always buy into talent. So to me, small di- difference in ADP, give me A-chain. All right, we're going to take a break here. The Bills, the Broncos, and more when we come back on Fantasy Football today, right after this. All right, guys, I'm going to ask you to speed it up because I've been waiting all day, all week for Fantasy yeah. Jeopardy. So we did our top five backfield battles. They were... Seattle, Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, and Miami. And let's go to Buffalo here to start yeah. our next group. Do we have to? Uh, the ADPs are fairly similar. James Cook, round eight at RB30. Damian Harris, round 10 at RB40. How do you see it, Heath? Um, strong prefer James Cook. Um, I just wanted to keep aligning with Dan. I, I have some hope that James Cook might buck the trend. I don't want to dress until I see it proven that Josh Allen's actually going to take a step back from rushing, especially inside the 10. I don't want to draft a plotter whose appeal is scoring touchdowns on a team with Josh Allen. So I'm Damian. I don't, I'm not drafting any Damian Harris. Okay. I think that that works good. Thumbs up, Dan. Perfect. Well said. All right. Next up, Denver right now, the ADP is very similar for Javante Williams and Samaj P Ryan. Uh, round seven, RB28 for Williams. And round nine, RB33 for Zamaje Pirine. If they were going that close, round seven and round nine, Dan, who would you take first, Javante or Pirine? I actually love both at that value. I'd be happy with both or either. Uh, I guess if you put push game to shove, I would take Williams just because of the way I play fantasy. I like to swing for the fences, play for first place. I don't really care about second, third, and fourth. But I like Pirine a lot too, so it's tough for me. I'll go with slight edge Williams. Um. Love, just in case anybody thought Dan was just agreeing with, with what I said, yeah. um, I'll go second and agree with what Dan said. Um, <laughs> some of these teams I didn't like either of the running backs at cost. I like both of these running backs at cost. Um, I'd probably lean, I only have one round separating them, so I'd probably lean towards P. Ryan, but happy to draft both of them here. Yeah. So I, we did a draft a couple weeks ago and I took both of them. I took Javante Williams in round six and P. Ryan in round eight. And in both cases, I did not have another pick for another like 20 picks um, or 22 picks. So I did feel like I had to reach for Pirine. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but do you feel like if you draft Javante Williams that you, I never yeah. would say need, I never would say need, but that you want Pirine? I want Pirine. So if I happen to draft Javante Williams, that wouldn't stop me from wanting Pirine, but I don't want Pirine more because I drafted Javante Williams. 
Okay. How about the Packers? Heath, you didn't really think this was a backfield battle per se. We Jones might disagree on this one, by the way. Oh, Jones is going at the four or five turn. He's RB 16. AJ Dillon, round nine, RB 32. So, uh, Heath, your thoughts on the Packers? Like them both. Um, slight lean to Aaron Jones. No, I just, I think we're going to see between 46 and 50% of the rush attempts go to Aaron Jones and between 12 and 14% of the targets go to Aaron Jones and Dylan's going to be 35 to 40% of the rush attempts and six to 7% target share. I think that we've now maybe Jones falls off in the middle of the year and Dylan gets a larger share of the work because Jones is getting up there in age, but I think it's been pretty well established that it's a one, a one B situation. Aaron Jones is better. And, and less Aaron Jones gets old. It'll stay that way. Yeah, this is the one where we disagree on. I went over it on my bus show. Uh, Aaron Jones, one of my one of my bus picks for this year. I just don't see it with Aaron Jones. I don't see the path toward fantasy success on this offense. Now, I'm taking the gamble here that Jordan Love and this offense won't be very good. And mm. that, to me, I don't I don't see the, the – I know he still has a passing down role, Aaron Jones. That's good. But the red zone role, not certain on a bad offense. I feel like I'm worried about where the touchdowns are coming from for Aaron Jones in 2023. And without a lot of touchdowns, it's hard to return value in the fourth round. Yeah. And I, I guess you weren't paying attention to what Romeo Dobbs said about Jordan Love. I mean, it was our first news item. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the Saints. Interesting backfield battle here. We just still don't even know. This is something we pretty much have never we haven't talked yeah. about this, I feel like, in months. <laughs> yeah, Kamara's <laughs> potential suspension. Right, yeah. and and where, how to draft him. But he's in round nine pick, Alvin Yeesh. Kamara. And so is Jamal Williams. Kamara's RB34. Jamal Williams is RB37. And then Kendry Miller, the rookie, is RB45. So, Dan, is what do you think about the, the Saints? How would you draft them? You've got Kamara and Williams in round nine and Kendry Miller later on, uh, probably around 12-ish or so. I think it's a funny scenario for me, Adam, because we've done a bunch of mock drafts now for the site, uh, for the magazine, whatever it would be. And I feel like I look at this and I say, my God, I would love to take a gamble on Kamara in round nine or eight or seven. Like, this is all feels great to me. It all feels like I'm swinging for the fences. And yet on every single one of those teams, I don't have Kamara on any of them. So I clearly didn't actually do it. When push came to shove, I found a player who I liked more in each round. So I think on the surface, it feels like I would say Kamara here. Maybe I will say Kamara because I don't really like the other two or at value that as much, but I end up not drafting him as much. I think this is more of just an avoid situation for me, this backfield. Heath, how about you? Um, it's Kamara if I can get him in round nine. I have no interest in drafting Jamal Williams yeah. and or Kendry Miller, really. I, I, I really with Heath on that. I have zero interest really in, in Williams for sure, maybe and Miller close as well. Uh, but what? Okay, so then let's say there's breaking news and Kamara <laughs> suspended six games. Right. Rebound. I do not believe there's a player on the roster that's going to get Alvin Kamara's target share at running back. This would be an exception to my running back bucket theory, mm. um, because I don't think that Jamal Williams or Kendry Miller are in the same like. I, I, not even. I don't think. Not sure they're as good as Ken Walker in the passing game. Yeah. And I don't do think they he's have very to, good to, to be worth a ninth round pick. You're still talking about a starting running back. Maybe you catch. Well, they wouldn't be not, not suspended that for the point. entire season. Yeah. No, Kamara suspended for six games. You went zero RB. You want to get off to a hot start. You got, you know, look, I, I don't believe much in Jamal Williams, but I do think he's going to be ahead of Kendry Miller at, at Miller's first games of his NFL career. Agreed. And if you're talking about a starting running back, that that guy that guy's probably a low end RB too. Um, Dan's concerns about the Packers offense. I'm the the guy who thinks the Saints might actually be bad offensively. I feel that. I really do feel that with Derek Carr. I know Adam's a big Derek Carr guy, but I really feel that. You are. You want? You know, what, are you, what are you laughing I, at? I, Dan, Dan decides so many things to me. I'm no, no, no. I'm a big Derek Carr guy. I mean, Adam, I mean, Adam, Adam, Adam. Live on air with Jamie and me. You once said, if the Washington football team, and I still call them that, I don't care, Commander's a stupid name. If the Washington football team acquires Derek Carr, they have Super Bowl hopes. You did say that once. I said Super Bowl hopes, or I said I they go to the playoffs. Something about a Super Bowl contender. Either. I don't. I do not. I do not. <laughs> I think I probably said they're not. A I Super think Bowl this is another case of Adam <laughs> being contrarian against me and getting <laughs> trapped into liking a player more than he actually does, much like the David Montgomery situation. 
I think um, he's a league average quarterback there. Next oh. time Jamie's on, we're going to find out what the yeah, exact yeah, quote think... was, but it was something bad. Yeah. Oh, it... you went all in on Carr. He is what we. He's oh. what I, I think he's exactly <laughs> what a league average quarterback w- used to be. Okay. I don't think he quite is anymore. All right, we have yeah. four more here. Washington, Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson are both round nine picks. Who do you like better, Dan? Ugh. Gibson slightly. I, I have a little bit of hope that they can get something going with the enemy there. Yep. Um, but neither really for me. I'm, this is a very big avoid for me. Gibson a lot in PPR. Uh, both are fine and none or half. Uh, Samaj and Piran, right. AJ Dillon, and the two commanders running backs are all round nine picks based on this average draft position. Uh, are, are the commanders running backs last in that group? <sighs> Yeah, but I've got like, I've got P. Ryan, Dylan, and Gibson all in round seven. So um, I like all three of them. I like the take Heath had with Gibson PPR. I think I need to focus a little bit more on that, the, uh, the potential upside for him in PPR. 